Hi, thanks for watching DataVits. This video is on how to get data out of SQL Server using stored procedures in .NET 5. All right, so it's changed a little bit even since just .NET Core 3.1. So pay close attention and follow along in Visual Studio if you like. I've got another video out there on Entity Framework Code First and Entity Framework Database First, but this one is specifically on stored procedures with Entity Framework for .NET 5. Let's jump right into it. Just real quick first, we are going to need to create a stored procedure before we can import it into Visual Studio. I suggest you watch that part even if you already know how to create stored procedures because it's going to be something to refer back to when we talk about the columns and the parameter names. Open SSMS or SQL Server Management Studio. And then you're going to want to go to the database that you want to create your stored procedure in, of course. In my case, it's this one called EF Easy Example. Then you're going to want to expand programmability if it's not already expanded. Then expand stored procedures and right click on the stored procedure folder and click stored procedure. This is going to create that, that uh, Microsoft you know, auto generated helper here. You'll notice that it's already put set note count on. If you're not very familiar with stored procedures, uh, that just means you don't want it to return the uh, row count along with the results. You don't care about that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start filling this out. So in my case, I've got a table named students. And in that student, let me just show you what the data looks like to give you some context. I've got two students named Amy amongst five students. So let's just have a stored procedure that returns students named Amy. Okay, so let's call this create procedure students uh, with first name. And we'll have pass in Amy as a parameter just so we have some parameters to show as an example. So let's call it name first. And we've got to give that a data type. So let's do um, var car 200. And now let's create our select statement. So we're going to do select student name from students students where character index of our parameter name first and the column in the database which is student name equal to one and all we're doing here guys is we're using a built-in SQL server function named character index to see if that parameter is in that column to return all the names where it is true, where this condition is true, then we know they have that first name. So let's go ahead and hit F5 to build the stored procedure. Then we're gonna come over here on the left-hand side under programmability, stored procedures, right-click and left-click on refresh. There's our new stored procedure. We're gonna right-click it and left-click on execute stored procedure. We're gonna populate that name. We're just testing it guys to make sure it works. You always wanna make sure it works before you bring it into Visual Studio and create an application against it. So let's give it the first name, Amy, to see how many students have the first name, Amy. And there you go, it found Amy Lincoln and Amy Evans. And going back to our student table, there you could see them there. There's only two that had Amy in there. All right, well, we've got a start procedure now. Let's go ahead and bring it into our application. Okay, so I'm back in Visual Studio. I've created a new project, a console application, but you could do this with web. And just as if this was a database first entity framework project where I wasn't dealing with stored procedures, regardless of that, um, I did it the same way. I just uh, imported my NuGet packages for entity framework core, entity framework core tools, entity framework core SQL server. And then I scaffolded it with the package manager console telling it where my database was and uh, the folder that I wanted it to put the generated models into. And I say that it's just as if it was database first, even though this is in this case database first, um, because it's not gonna generate you classes for those stored procedures with .NET 5. Um, but I do encourage you, if you're new to uh, Entity Framework, I have video out there already on uh, database first and code first. Check those videos out first. Let's keep going now because this is specific to stored procedures, which is kind of why I skipped over some of this 
let's get right into the goods. Before you call us to our procedure, make sure your tables are working. It's a super quick test. Get your context into your application. If it's a web project, of course, you'll be working in the startup.cs for that step. Um, but let's just go ahead, in my case, and put together a reference to the context. And we're going to query one of the tables real quick. Context.table name. We'll just take the first, first one it found. It didn't have first or default because I don't have link uh, link here. So using system dot link. So students dot first or default. And let's just put a breakpoint here. Hit F five. Boom boom boom. Hello world. If I hover over results. Joe Smith was pulled. So we know that it is, in fact, uh, working with the database, connection string, all that kind of stuff. Let's jump right now into start procedures. Go into your models, and we're going to add a new class. We're going to call it SP results. SP results. And SP is just start procedure, but you can give this any name you want, of course. And in here, let's make this a public class. And let's give it a property. So hit prop, tab, tab, string, tab, tab. And do um, student name. And save. Save all. Now, we're going to put this SP results into the context class. So open up your context class. And if you, ha if you did database first, and you, you have probably have a huge list of tables in here. Uh, even if it was code first, it'll be a big list of tables. Context might be buried in the middle of it, okay? So we're going to be adding a new DB set in here. So scroll up right above the DB, uh, the DB set, the top one that you have. You could do public virtual DB set of type, the model that you just created, which in my case is SP results. SP results. If you did like me and you made it already plural and you want to pluralize the plural, that just doesn't make sense. You have an S on the end of here. It's really easy, guys. All you got to do is right click on it and rename it. Just take off the S and apply and it'll update all the related files. All right, don't forget to put your get and set on there and save it. Now we can go back to our program.cs. Let's do this as a result too. Because result one was from a table, so result two will be from the start procedure. So result two equal to context, which in our case, our instance of context is EF easy example context dot SP results. And then I'm going to bring it down a line and we're going to do from string interpolated, which is the latest as of the date of this video in .NET 5 for doing this. Um, now, if it underlines in red, you might need to add a using. If you don't see the using, you might need to add another package because it's not really that straightforward. The package you might need is called Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Relational. I just installed it here. So if I do control dot, the using suggested is using Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore. And in the parameters here, we're going to put the dollar sign for an interpolated string with double quotes and semicolon at the end. And we'll do exec for execute, name the store procedure, which was students with first name, if you remember from earlier in SSMS. And then we're going to put our parameter name from SSMS. So if we come back over here and we've got the parameter name at sign name first, we'll do at sign name first equals, and then we'll put our squiggly brackets and our variable name, because it's string interpolation, drop it right in there. Now, one quick thing that I breezed over earlier before I execute this, it, just in case you're following along, is that class that we created, I had forgot to add the attribute keyless. So I'm pointing it out to you now. If you don't put this here, then you're going to get an error saying that this doesn't have a primary key. Well, it's not going to have a primary key because it's a stored procedure. Uh, and, you know, you still could be returning one of these other classes here, in which case you wouldn't need to deal with that. But if you're returning a custom result because a stored procedure returns 
different number of columns or different types of columns, then you want to create one of these classes like this. Then in this case, you'll want to put key lists if it's just for a start procedure, okay? And that requires Microsoft at any framework core in the usings. All right, let's go ahead and execute this. I've got a breakpoint at the end. Hit F5. There we go. I'm going to hover over result two, results view. And as expected, there's two student names of Amy Lincoln and Amy Evans, because they both start with Amy. That's pretty much it, guys. I think there are going to be some updates to uh, Entity Framework with .NET 6 that will probably take care of this a little bit better. Uh, maybe there's already something out there in the works in one of the preview packages. I'd love to hear about it if you know. Um, but uh, you can also do other things, too, with this uh, from interpolated. You can, from SQL interpolated, you could call any any just raw SQL here. Just be careful with that, you know. Got to sanitize things before you drop them in here. As I was mentioning earlier, this here might not be sufficient, but this does help like this. Putting it at least into a SQL parameter helps you to prevent injection. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.